All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we have more PlayStation news, rumors, and leaks to go over and cover. We're starting here with the PlayStation 5 Pro. I'm sure that many of you are aware that the PS5 Pro was basically trending yesterday because the specifications for this new console from Sony leaked out. However, these new specs caused quite a bit of discourse because a lot of people simply didn't believe it. A lot of people thought that the specifications that were leaked sounded a bit too good to be true, sounded like Sony was maybe not going to do that much with the PS5 Pro. But now we have one of the industry's most reliable insiders, Tom Henderson, coming out and confirming that the specifications that leaked for the PS5 Pro yesterday are, in fact, the real deal. They're reporting here over on Insider Gaming, saying Insider Gaming can confirm that the leaked PS5 Pro specs leaked earlier today are real, and the PlayStation 5 Pro is still tentatively targeting a 2024 holiday release. Speaking with sources who wish to remain anonymous because they were not authorized to talk about the company's plans, we can confirm that the leaked documentation from YouTube channel Moore's Law is Dead is real, despite the criticism of the leaker and the leaked specs. Insider Gaming can confirm that the documentation leaked is from a PlayStation developer portal, which was sent out this week to a wider band of third-party developers. In early 2023, I reported via key to gaming that PS5 Pro is under the codename Trinity and will be targeting improved and consistent FPS at 4K resolution, a new performance mode for 8K resolution, and accelerated ray tracing. In addition, it was reported that Trinity will have 30 WGP and 18,000 MTS memory. So the leaked specifications that we got yesterday from Moore's Law is Dead are as follows. Rendering 45% faster than the PS5 two to three times ray tracing increase, and in some cases, four times ray tracing increase, 33.5 teraflops, PSSR, PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution Upscaling, or Upscaling slash Anti-Aliasing Solution, support for resolution up to 8K is planned for future SDK versions, custom mach machine learning architecture, AI accelerator supporting 300 tops of 8-bit computation, 67 teraflops of 16-bit floating point. And so, yes, as you can see, when Moore's Law is Dead came out yesterday and talked about the specifications for the PS5 Pro, a lot of people thought that this sounds way too good to be true, a 33.5 teraflop PS5 Pro, you know, up to, in some cases, four times more ray tracing, 45% faster. It all sounded a bit too good to be true, but once Tom Henderson came out and confirmed that, yes, after talking to his own sources, these are legitimate, I think it got people a lot more excited about the PS5 Pro, but obviously we still don't know the price of this console. Now, the article concludes here by saying Insider Gaming, who has also shared documentation from the developer portal under the condition that it's not shared publicly or privately, can also confirm that dev kits have been available to first-party studios since September of 2023. Third-party since January 2024, and from spring 2024, test kits will also be available, which will be identical to the final product. Insider Gaming understands that the PS5 Pro is currently aiming for a tentative holiday 2024 release, but the date could be changed due to the lack of first-party games released on the PlayStation 5 this year. So to me, this is very interesting because everything we've heard up until this point has pointed to a holiday 2024 release, but Insider Gaming is coming out and saying that internally, Sony is considering the possibility of delaying the PS5 Pro specifically due to a lack of first-party games that are not going to be ready to release this year. And yeah, that is kind of a concern, right? You have Sony coming out with a mid-gen refresh that sounds like it's going to be an absolute beast of a console, but are they going to have enough of their own games to really show off and make this console shine? I think they could maybe find a middle ground where they have games, first party games that is, to show off on this console and to reveal, but they won't be coming until later, maybe sometime in 2025 and beyond. Of course, that could maybe hurt the potential sales of the PS5 Pro up front, but it'll be really interesting to see how Sony decides to handle it. But yeah, when looking at these specifications for the PS5 Pro, it seems pretty clear to me that 
Sony is looking to make this console a pretty substantial mid-gen upgrade. It sounds like it's going to be able to do quite a bit for future games. Um, of course, if we look back to the PS4 Pro, the major selling point was 4K resolution. And to be fair, Sony really didn't have to do much beyond that because it was a pretty big deal. You buy a 4K TV, you want to be able to play games at 4K or at least dynamic 4K resolutions. This time around, it's not that simple. Therefore, in order for Sony to not only justify a PS5 Pro, but convince people that it's a worthwhile upgrade, they're going to have to add more to the overall package. And it does seem like that's exactly what they're doing here. One final note before moving on to the next topic is the PSSR or the spectral resolution that Sony is working on here. One of the things that Moore's Law is dead emphasized is that it is seemingly better than AMD's FSR2. We don't know how it's going to stack up against NVIDIA's DLSS 3.5, but it seems like Sony is putting a lot into this, um, you know, this kind of upscaling anti-aliasing technology, and it's going to be a pretty big deal for not only their games, but all games coming to PlayStation consoles in the future. That's something we definitely want to pay attention to, and I will keep you guys updated if we learn more about it. I'm sure that if Sony is going to do a big reveal for the PS5 Pro. This is something they're going to talk about quite extensively um, with good reason. So there you go. That is all the new information regarding the PS5 Pro. I guess the only question I have for you guys at this point is how much do you think this console is going to cost? We're moving on to the next topic here, which talks about Helldivers 2. This is being reported by VGC. Sony's breakout hit Helldivers 2 has likely sold more than 8 million copies since its release last month, a market analyst has said. That's according to TD Cohen analyst Doug Kreutz, who wrote in a note this week via Bloomberg that this figure is likely growing every week. We believe the game has performed well ahead of expectations, he said. Sony has not released official sales figures for the co-op shooter, but Helldivers 2 has regularly exceeded 430 concurrent players on Steam per steam db what's interesting to me about that is we saw a supposed insider recently claim that helldivers 2 is about to hit 10 million units sold a lot of people didn't believe that understandably so because that's a huge milestone for a game like this especially considering it's exclusive to one console but at the same time we started seeing this data and it started to paint i think a clear picture that yeah this game is doing i think way better than anybody could imagine. We're talking well beyond 5 million units sold, and now we're hearing from an analyst that, yeah, it's certainly beyond 8 million. It seems that any day now, it's going to hit the 10 million units sold, and I really do wonder if Sony and Arrowhead are gonna come out and announce that, but you know, I think it's very deserved for a game like Helldivers 2. Great game, very happy to see the type of success that both um, Arrowhead and Sony are finding with a title like this. Moving on to the next topic, we have what seems to be a direct tease for new Metal Gear Solid 3 remake news. This is being reported by Push Square. Konami's PS5 remake of Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater will be the subject of a future episode in the series YouTube Legacy series, where David Hayter guides you through the classic stealth franchise. The first part was posted today, and it is teased that the future episode will delve into the epic, long-awaited remake of what many fans consider to be the best game in the entire franchise. For the rest of the video, Solid Snake voice actor David Hayter explains why the Metal Gear Solid franchise is so beloved and touches on the first three entries that form the PS5 PS4 Master Collection. The likes of Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots and Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain are expected to be bundled into a second volume, but Konami hasn't shared any official information yet. And so, yeah, I came across this new legacy series that Konami posted on their YouTube channel. It's cool to see David Hayter still involved with the Metal Gear Solid series. And yeah, he does not only tease that a future episode will be dedicated to the remake, so we want to look out for that. But he seems to also subtly tease that maybe we're going to be hearing news about a um, legacy collection or a master collection volume two that will feature 
MGS4 Guns of the Patriots. So I will be keeping my eyes peeled for this and obviously we'll talk about it when it releases. But continuing to talk about Konami, we have more info here on Silent Hill 2 Remake being reported by WCCF Tech. Konami still hasn't said anything about the release date of Silent Hill 2 Remake. However, several clues point to an inbound announcement. To begin with, the back end of the game's Steam page is now constantly receiving updates. Yesterday, according to SteamDB, it was updated with achievement languages, which cover multiple different languages. This follows recent ratings of the Silent Hill 2 remake by South Korea's Games Rating Board, which has often provided evidence of upcoming game launches. Moreover, as spotted on Reddit, Mexican retailer Sanborns has listed the game on its website for a May 30th launch. The date has since been changed, but it's impossible to know if they got an email from Konami or if it was simply a mistake on their end. And that's what's interesting, the fact that the date was changed from May 30th indicates that it was actually not a placeholder, as many suspected, and they may have accidentally posted the release date. A May 30th release date does sound very believable. Everything we've been hearing about Silent Hill 2 Remake is essentially that the game is done and ready to go. It just comes down to when Konami wants to essentially pull the trigger. But we are going to move on to the final topic of the video, which is Sony admitting that they made a misstep with the pricing of the PlayStation 3. Sony has admitted that it has hit a rough patch with the PS3's launch, starting with the console's price and difficult architecture. In a video interview with CNBC, outgoing PlayStation boss Jim Ryan, PlayStation Studios head Herman Holst, and former PlayStation executive Sean Layden br briefly discussed what went wrong. Ryan said that if he had to encapsulate the PlayStation 3 generation, he'd conclude that it got they got a bit carried away with the success that they had been enjoying with the PlayStation 2. We kind of stumbled a little bit at the start of that generation, Ryan added, admitting that the early days of the PS3 were difficult. Herman Holst also chimed in, essentially saying that it was a very powerful machine, but one that was very difficult to develop games for. He added that Sony had to work very hard with some amazing franchises to bring games to the PS3. And Sean Layden in the interview also acknowledged that it was a misstep, uh, realizing the hardware and price fumbles, and the company had to focus on the software side um, of things in order to make the comeback. And so the reason why I wanted to mention this is it's actually very reassuring to hear Sony talk about this, especially so openly and acknowledge the biggest mistakes that they made with the PlayStation brand. It just goes to show that it's something that's still I wouldn't say at the forefront of their minds, but something they still remember, right? Something they keep in mind. And I think that's very important because there's still this fear that Sony's going to go back to their like PS3 arrogant ways and make big mistakes. But as long as there are still people involved with the company, granted Jim Ryan is retiring, Sean Layden has been gone for a little while now, but Herman Holst is still there. As long as the people who are running the PlayStation business remember this, they will know not to repeat those same mistakes. But yeah, I thought you guys would be interested in hearing what they had to say. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. If you did, be sure to leave it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon. And feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.